everyone, and welcome to our um, next ALD career conversation. Um, last year, Alpha Lambda Delta updated its tagline to taking you from first year to career. And that's what this series looks to do. It looks to explore the path um, between where you are now as a student and where you want to be at, in your career. So we're very grateful to our alumni like um, Jordan, who have agreed to share their journey with us. And we're also thrilled to have so many students on the call as well today. Um, so we'll get started with some introductions. Facilitating today will be myself and Eileen. Um, and yeah, Eileen, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Eileen Merberg. I'm the Executive Director of Alpha Lambda Delta. We're uh, here in our, I'm in the headquarters in our office in upstate Rochester, New York, Western New York. Welcome, glad to have you all here. And thank you so much, Jordan, uh, for, yeah. for uh, being our guest today. Of course. And I'm Trish Maxwell. I'm the Director of Communication in the National Office. Um, I work with Eileen, supporting our members and our chapters. So our featured speaker today is Jordan Marshall. She was inducted into ALD in 2015 at Purdue University. She received her bachelor's in environmental and ecological engineering. Um, and she currently works in Indianapolis where she's a water resource engineer for Arcadis, if I said that. Yep, that's how you say it. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, we'd like to get started with a few kind of fun questions just to break the ice with you. Um, so Jordan, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's so hard. Um, I really like curry, so I guess that, I don't know. <laughs> I make a lot of curry and um, I really like Thai curry, so maybe that, because I always crave it. Mm -hmm. Nice. I had that for lunch today. Oh, <laughs> I love curry too. Yeah. Okay. If you won an all expenses seven, a uh, paid, all expenses paid, seven day vacation, and let's pretend that COVID magically disappeared. Mm -hmm. and that you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Probably, um, I would say like Switzerland or something because I've really always wanted to like hike their mountains. I recently did my first 14er, so that was really cool. So I guess I haven't ever been to the Swiss mountains. So I think that'd be really, really cool. You did your first what? 14er, like okay. um, 14,000 feet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Hiked 14, up 14. Yeah. 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 Elevation. Yeah. Okay. Cool. There's like a certain amount of those in the United States that people okay. try to accomplish. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it's not easy. <laughs> no, no, it certainly doesn't sound it. Um, so when you were younger, what did you want to be? Um, well, in reality, a singer, but that didn't pan out. Um, but I really always liked the environment. So I always wanted to have something to do with it. And then as I, I like thought about doing field work and I thought, but then I wanted to actually do something in terms of design, because I've always wanted to make a difference. And my parents were kind of like, well, you like the environment and you like, like making things. So why don't you just do engineering? So I was like, that sounds, that sounds right along what I want to do. But yeah, for a long time, it was a singer, though. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you can always do that on the side. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, so um, let's get started. And uh, what if you could talk a little bit about Alpha Lambda Delta just as a place to sort of start and set the stage because it's a first year honor society and, and you were invited and joined early mm -hmm. in your undergrad experience. What role, if any, did ALD play? Uh, were you involved in your chapter? Um, what sort of motivated you to join the organization? And so sort of, did you get anything out of it as an undergrad? Yeah, I would say as I joined my freshman year, and I would say that it was a big motivator um, to kind of maintain grades and keep studying. I didn't necessarily participate actively in the chapter, but I had friends that did in, in engineering. Um, so I would just kind of hear through them. But other than that, yeah. It was, it was nice. It was like a nice ceremony and you got a little shirt and everything. Mm -hmm. right. Good. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we hear a lot of, you know, a lot of students like that recognition and kind of, right. they might not be actively involved in the chapter, but it still plays, you know, a role in motivating them to continue their success. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at your major and the different academic experiences that you had, which ones helped you, how did it help you prepare for your career? Um, a lot of things that I did in my major, I use now. So I guess some classes that I focused on, because I knew when I started getting into engineering, I knew I wanted to work more with water um, after taking a multitude of classes. Like I tried air, I tried soil, and I was like, eh, I want to do water. So now I, like, I have like all my notes, honestly, with me and any books that I bought that have to do with water and pumping, because that's a lot of the work that I that I do. So I guess it kind of prepared me for all the um, the equations and the calculations that I'd be doing, as well as some time management. Because it, it's like kind of like, well, at least in my job as a consultant, I'm working on a lot of different projects. And it's like the same as college where you're balancing a lot of different classes and you have different deadlines in each class. So I guess that's kind of how it helped prepare me. So you selected water. Um, you mm -hmm. also mentioned air and soil. Are there any other um, kind of pathways in? Um, yeah. So I know to? some people that went into solar uh, technologies, other people went, I mean, I have a decent amount of friends that went to waste. Um, well, I, I'm in waste, but wastewater, or they did like, um, they did actual environmental engineering within their companies so they're out there and they're cleaning hazardous waste in brownfields and there's also you could do water soil there's just like a lot of outlets and you can all oh, some people went into gas um, and oil so they work for those companies and a lot of industries hire environmental engineers to serve as like safety help and environmental people as well great and did you do any internships or um have you know um, kind of side jobs along the way that helped you learn the field? Yeah, so I initially got an internship um, with the Department of Public Works in Indianapolis. So that was really nice because I got to um, kind of understand how the recycling works. And then afterwards, I had an internship with Nestle as kind of, um, I helped map out the water in their factory because they didn't know where their water usage was going and that helped me learn that I didn't really want to be working in industry. Um, I really like doing the project side and I like change uh, all the change that comes along with being in the project sector rather than like being in the factory at all times. So I, I learned I learned a lot because I, I do work in factories now where I help them with their wastewater. So having that experience at Nestle was like really nice because I could be like, okay, I know this is kind of how it functions in terms of factory floor to wastewater. Sure, makes sense. Mm -hmm. What about, um, so any other academic experiences you had? I think, you know, again, our tagline is first year to career. So we're looking at sort of four years of undergraduate experiences. Mm -hmm. Our participants today and those who might be watching the recording later could be sophomores right now or maybe they're still maybe they're freshmen they just joined ALD in their in their freshman year or um, any class level uh, in their experience so any recommendations we'll talk a little bit more about your path and other things you did as an undergrad and then maybe any suggestions for students for how they can gain academic experiences beyond the classroom I guess one thing was, I guess this isn't necessarily research, but we did research within it was my senior design. Um, mm -hmm. So we worked with a wastewater treatment plant in terms of redoing how their flocculation system works. So we studied that. And then there were certain classes that I really wanted to take. Um, one big one that a lot of people in my major didn't really take was a stormwater class in which we actually implemented uh, natural uh, or rain gardens, rain barrels, uh, bio swales, and native savannas at local sites. So I got to kind of heat on that project and design um, a native savanna for a learning site for children, which is really right. cool. But that's cool. like, a, that was like a more specialized class that I took because sure. of my interest in it. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So just one last question about internships, because I sort of you hear a lot about internships that right, yeah. un undergraduate students, whenever you get an opportunity, mm -hmm. um, take take one. Uh, so how how did you get yours? How do you get it? Where do you go? If you have like no idea how to get, an right. internship, who do you talk to? How do you get placed? How do you apply? Where did yeah. you how did you get yours? So my first one, I but at the Department of Public Works for Indianapolis, they kind of just sent out a thing being like, do you want to be a mayor's intern? And it was a part-time thing. So I worked uh, at the office for three days a week. And then the other times I, I wasn't getting paid for it. It was a free internship. So then the other times I was hostessing at the same time so that I, I was making some income. Um, and then my, so I applied with that online. You had to write a couple essays. You just kind of have to look for those things. They they often will um, announce them on their social media and stuff like that. And then the other internship I, I got was through a career fair. So yeah, so you go up and you talk to them and you give them their, your resume. And you also, a lot of them say apply online and which is super true um, because at the career fairs, even if they don't like contact you for an onsite interview, um, they do take your resume and they do take into account like what you have on there because I went back and recruited for Purdue. So that was a big, a big thing that was eye opening was I was like, we were actually taking the resumes and being like, we like this person. And so it, it does make a difference if you do give the resumes out at those things. Great. Yeah. So mm -hmm. everyone go to career fairs that are sponsored yeah. by your career centers. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye out for them. There's usually at least one a year, maybe one yeah. a semester. Good. Thanks. I, to get my to get my job personally, I applied. Purdue has this thing called Purdue CCO, which is the Career Opportunity Center, um, and I applied online through that, and that's how I got in contact. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, are there any other professional organizations student could, students could join to kind of help build those relationships or connections to the yeah. job? And yeah, what are so they? A uh, good one, at least for me, was the Society of Women in Engineering. Um, I had a lot of friends who were part of that. One of my friends was a president, and they would bring in speakers, and they had a, a big network of people um, with that. And I guess one, one thing that was also really helpful, at least that my major did, is they would partner us with someone. I enrolled in doing this mentor-mentee thing my senior year because I really wanted to get other outside industry information and they partnered me with um, a civil engineer in another company so I was able to kind of contact with him and talk to him about like what my career goals were and he helped me kind of navigate the the field as well and then I don't know if a lot of people have like their professors in their major are often sending out different um jobs that they hear about because that was a big help for me as well because I wrote a couple co cover letters and directly emailed it to those to say that I was interested nice mm -hmm. yeah the more connections you can build the better for sure yeah. um so talk to me about what a typical day looked like at work for you and I'm interested to know what it looked like kind of before COVID and if COVID right. has had an impact in what it looks like now right so a typical day for me is I'm able to walk to work. Um, I chose to live where I live so that I could walk to work. So I usually get in around 9 a.m. And I have a lot of different things that go on in terms of projects. So maybe I'm reviewing specifications for a project. Maybe I'm doing AutoCAD um, design edits where I'm draw marking them up and then sending them back to a CAD drafter to make. Maybe I'm calculating pumps. Um, I My office is pretty small. We're only about 60 people and we've always had the ability to work from home. So some people work solely at home, some people come in. So there's usually like 25, 30 people that are usually in um, and we have like another side of our company who's environmental. So they do a lot more site work um, I do some site work, but not necessarily as much as they do because they travel kind of weekly. But yeah, and then usually when I can always be on emails um, and everything, and then my time ends when my work kind of ends for the day. So uh, oftentimes they say, at least at my company for consulting is 
50, we bill our hours. So like if you work 50 hours a week, that's 40 hours of billable time. So they, they really stress like billable, billability and everything. But I guess now in, uh, I didn't, I used to always walk into the office cause I found, I found it like more motivating. It was an open concept. And now I am working from home more, which I always had the opportunity, but it's kind of nice to go in and feel like in the zone rather than being at home. Yeah, it's an adjustment for sure. So I'm curious to know, like, what does a site visit look like for a water engineer? Right. So recently I had a site visit in Detroit where I drove up and went to a manufacturing plant and looked at their wastewater treatment plant at this facility. And oftentimes we do site visits kind of after um, we get like initial design information and then we use it to kind of fill in the gaps. I'm not often going to Detroit for this, um, but I was taking pictures of their equipment. I was mapping, I was walking through pipelines to make sure that we had everything. Um, I was identifying pump tags to the ones that we have in our drawing. So I had a drawing set that we had made up uh, on site and like seeing if everything matched and everything. And then I was also like looking for their record drawings so that we could scan them and then use them for our usage because there were some that we were missing that they um, were willing to offer us. So it's mostly like picture taking, marking up details. I do measurements um, and everything. So yeah. And then often in construction and different phases of the construction, you will go on site to see how like pro progress meetings are a big thing to see how the contractors are doing, um, what issues there are, how we can kind of fix them. Because one project that I worked on that is in that is nearing substantial completion is um, a quarry that we're turning into a, uh, a reservoir so that we can pump out water to their water treatment plant. So I'm getting the sense that you enjoy what you do, which is great and nice yeah. and always ideal. Uh, do you have a favorite thing about your career, about what you do? Yeah, I really like the flexibility of consulting. Um, it is long hours. I, I, can't, I can't lie. I, there's some days where I'll log on at 8 a.m. and I'll be working till 8 p.m or later, depending on who's up and who's awake, because we have people all over the country. Um, actually, we're international. So oftentimes I'll work with people who are in India. Um, but yeah, so I do like it. I do, I, I like that about it. And I really like um, my supervisor and kind of the, the setup of my company. Yeah. Right. And um, so again, we've got ALD students from all over the country here uh, and watching, um, what advice would you give them, particularly as they are undergraduates, um, what should they be looking to do before they graduate or just right. advice on the job search or any experiences they could have before they graduate? Right. Like um, your top, top one or two pieces of advice. Okay. One thing <laughs> I would say is kind of develop relationship with their teachers. Yeah. If you decide to go to grad school or your path, they can help you find jobs and they can also write you a nice um, recommendation letter for those things. And then another is definitely check like your career opportunity, um, your, I don't know what you might call it, your schools, but the career center, um, go in, have your resume looked at. That's a big important thing. I would send my resume off to people and be like, can you just mark this up? Um, so I, I would say that, and honestly, take advantage of kind of every opportunity that you do have to apply for things and, um, be a part of professional organizations. <laughs> is there just one last question sort of on that same vein, sort of, mm -hmm. is there anything that you wish you had done? Um, so you gave great advice and you had some good experiences, but anything you missed that you, looking back, you wish you had done that, that you didn't do? There was more experience that I wish I would have gotten in terms of I was a part of some professional organizations, but not necessarily those that really pertain to my engineering degree. So I kind of wish I had spent more time with those. Um, I, th I think that's really all. I, I do also recommend 
that if you're going, in, if you're an engineer at least, to get your engineering training, your uh, your fundamentals of engineering exam, so that you can be an EIT in engineering training. Is that a, a universal exam any student can take? It, engineering. Uh, I actually don't know if it's universal, but I know at least in the United States that what? each oh, okay. it's a fundamental of engineering exam. Okay. Because it, it's the first step to being a professional engineer. So if you ever want to sign off on drawings, you have to be a professional engineer. Right. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. um, the last question I have for you is about the state of your field today. So, um, you know, are there a lot of jobs available? Is it tough to get a job? You know, how have Poli um, different political moves affected your field? Have they, have okay. they not? Um, I guess kind of what's the state? Um, I can only speak really for my company. I know we didn't lay off anyone, uh, at least in engineering terms. Um, so because I work in wastewater, a lot of our clients had already allocated money towards the projects that we're working on from the beginning of the year. And wastewater is a big need, regardless of what's going on in the political climate. Um, so there's always more projects to improve infrastructure and get water needs to everyone. And under this current administration, I know they have been looking at reducing limits in water. Um, so like lead limits and stuff like that. So that kind of put some of our clients on edge where they also wanted to, to meet those, meet those uh, permits and those levels so that they were in compliance. So that kind of helped us as well, continue to have jobs. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, uh, so we're gonna open it up to uh, all our um, participants, but um, while they're thinking uh, and is there anything Oh, anything sort of you wanted to add, maybe that you thought we'd ask that we didn't ask? Uh, again, I get, I've already asked you to share advice, but um, is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, one of my big things was just save your notes from your classes. Just yeah, save them. Make great. really good detailed notes because you never know when you're going to use them. Yeah, I that's good think, Yeah, I didn't think I'd be using them, and I was pulling things from under my bed at my parents' house and being like, good thing I kept this notebook. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's uh, great to um, be able to know that your textbooks too are useful. You spend so much money on textbooks. That right. The fact that, uh, you know, don't sell them off just yet. Like a lot of students are eager to sell them back to the bookstore for a fraction of what they paid. Uh, maybe hang on to them for a little bit. Yeah. Um, a lot of my coworkers kept theirs. So we have like our own little library at work yeah. where I've like sat on the floor and gone through all of them to see right. exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as Trish mentioned, feel free to type anything in chat or just, you know, um, unmute yourselves, turn your cameras on, join us. Uh, are there any questions from our participants today? Oh, yeah. What is the biggest risk you have taken? Oh, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> okay. Biggest risk. I would say being a part of projects you know nothing about, which I don't necessarily put myself on projects. Um, at the moment, my supervisor's still like, I put you on this project because I'm, I'm not at the level where I can say that um, I can apply to be on projects and kind of hint that I would like to be on them but there's one project that I was on with disinfection and I just knew nothing about disinfection. I was designing it and I had no idea about chlorine and um, the, oh, I can't think of the other um, name for it, but yeah, so we were doing chlorine disinfection and then you have another uh, sulfuric, I think it's, uh, ooh, ooh, sulfonators, yeah. Um, that we were designing and I, we just, I had no idea. So I had to read a lot of information um, and get to be knowledgeable about the subject so that I could talk to the client and be like, yeah, I definitely know what I'm doing because that's a big risk. If they're asking you questions and you're just sitting there and you don't really know what's going on, mm -hmm. then that can be kind of not great, so. 
yeah yeah that's great i mean you you have the you're all everybody you're in alpha lambda delta so you're already high achievers and, and intelligent mm -hmm. so yeah say yes to things take on things even if you don't know them because you can learn them they're learnable mm -hmm. you've come this far so that's great advice i love it if you're okay with it i should have asked you first i did just well they can always find you on linkedin so i just i just uh posted your uh, linkedin oh all good page i uh, haven't updated it in a bit but yeah <laughs> water resource engineers there so yeah mm -hmm. um so uh connect with jordan there one more question for you, Jordan. So you mm -hmm. focused more on water and there seem to be, you know, multiple different little pockets right. of environmental engineering. Is it easy to move between them? Do you, or do you just kind of like pick one and stay with it? Um, it? I would say it's easy. I do have a friend who he started off working with oil and gas and he he didn't really want to do oil and gas anymore because he was doing piping lines for them. So then he just switched to another field in another consulting company that where he was putting on water projects. So I guess it's easier because you get, at least in my engineering, you get like the piping experience and in that way they're similar, but it's, it's more of the project experience that they really look for, I would say. And I, I also would say, is something that I, I guess I can go back, but something that I wish I had learned more about um, is a bit more on AutoCAD because I did because when I was hired I was like I don't know how to do this and they're like that's okay we'll kind of teach you they didn't necessarily teach me so if you don't know AutoCAD I would definitely familiarize yourself. And we do have a question from Courtney. What's the biggest challenge that you've overcome within your field? You mm. might have touched on some of it already, but. Biggest challenge. There was one project where I, a big project actually, where I didn't calculate something correctly um, for a pump and we were putting them in. So at the last second, I kind of had to like do damage control. So that was a really big challenge of like contacting everyone before the project went through and being like, I made a mistake. And that was really hard for me because it it was just kind of letting everyone know that I messed up and um, that it wasn't going to work because of my calculations. I kind of, I had, my equations were right, but I had the information was like double counting itself um, where the velocity was two times what it should have been. So that mm -hmm. was a big challenge, I'd say, because we kind of had to uh, figure out how we can fix everything in the last second. Yeah. We're all human. <laughs> Which is not easy when you pre-ordered pumps and uh, yeah. had to make sure that even though that issue was made, there was a lot of um, overhead that we hadn't accounted for. Yeah. So it worked out, but it was still. Ooh. Yeah. That's a great example, though. I mean, good for you for like a lot of you hear people trying to cover it up or yeah. blame someone else. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I messed up. What can I say? I'm human. Right. What happens. Mm -hmm. Jordan, thank you so much for your yeah, time, uh, for sharing you. uh, your uh, career path with us and with the, with our students. We really appreciate it. It's been very. Yeah. Thank you for nice. having me.